and I welcome back. This is Kenya Television Service. My name is Giverson Maina. Um, this is one on one with Atul Singh, founder CEO, the, the Fair Observer. And he says, like it is now, we're discussing matters Africa, development, economic things, development. Is Africa rising? Is it going down? He says, US is going down. I don't know. That's not me. Now, let's go on. Singh. Look, look, look. I didn't say US is going down. Uh -huh. so, so. <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> All right. Now, is no, no, Africa... Let's rephrase it. Let's rephrase it. Yeah. So, here's the thing. Is Africa rising? Yes. But it has a very long way to go because it's rising from a very low base. So, Africa has to come up to Southeast Asia. Then, from Southeast Asia, it has to come up to East Asia East or Eastern Europe. Then, it has to move on. So it's a very, it's a century old, How, century long. Century, person. 100 years. 100 years. We'll get to the U.S. level. I don't know, uh, you know, what do you mean by the U.S. level? So what I meant by the U.S. not doing so well as it was, this is what I alluded to, is uh, that if you look at the U.S., the U.S. economy is in big trouble. It has a huge uh, deficit, both current account and budget. From China. Uh, from China, but also other countries. It's running a deficit, for instance, with Germany. It is running a deficit with South Korea. It is running deficits with lots of countries because in the U.S., people have been taking debt and they have been consuming. It has a culture of consumption. And what has also happened in the U.S. is the, the factories have gone or have all gone overseas. So there are very few jobs. So the average wages have been flat now for decades for the last two decades and more. And so you have uh, living standards that have not really risen. The great technological developments that have happened in the US have happened in, let's say, information technology, and initially they helped productivity. But uh, since then, uh, as John Pfeffer argued in a recent article for the Fair Observer, um, he argued um, in Fair Observer that uh, Facebook and Angry Birds are basically distractions and they are actually getting people not to work and people are on social media all the time and not working and product And some people are earning out of that. Pardon me? Some people are earning out of that. Uh, yeah, and, and now that's true. So, uh, but um, people are earning a lot out of that. So what has happened is that this revolution in Uber, etc. is certainly incredible, but it is benefiting a small sliver of society. And, of course, Wall Street and finance has become disproportionately large in the U.S. So you have a society where the 1% has got richer and richer since Reagan, Ronald Reagan, who I think was one of the most terrible presidents the U.S. has ever had. Um, he also supported apartheid, by the way. Ronald Reagan brought in a number of policies that were, some were needed, uh, but some were very, very, very counterproductive in the long run. And uh, you had a rising inequality, and then Bill Clinton liberalized the financial sector. He, he repealed Glass-Steagall, which Franklin Roosevelt had brought way back, uh, just after the Great Depression. And so you've had this period wherein the rich have gone richer and richer, and uh, inequality has just ballooned, and the benefits of, benefits of all the you know, changes in dynamism have gone to a very small section of society. And so there's real anger in the U.S., um, real um, challenges in the U.S. Um, healthcare is very expensive. University is very expensive. People are greatly in debt. And, and, and you have the rise of Donald Trump. I hate to say that again. That we'll is come reflecting back. We'll that come anger. Back to back. We'll come back to Trump. No, now, no, it's not Trump is just a symptom. Trump is not the problem. Yeah. The problem uh, is the disease underlying American society and American economy today. The phenomenon is something else. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't want to be America. You don't want to be a, a country which spends, m which increases more, uh, which, sorry, let me rephrase it. You don't want to be a country which for decades increases its spending on prisons more than it increases its spending on schools and sends one out of three black men to jail. And buying guns. Buying guns is another issue. Absolutely. And you, you, there are million dollar blocks now. Blocks in which policing and prisons cost over a million dollars per block. You could spend a fraction of that on programs such as for youth and for sports and for education and do a lot better. So I am not so sure you want to be the US. That would be terrible. That would be tragic.
Now, on matters of IT, matters of education, yeah. matters of health, yes. how is Africa doing? Look, in matters of education, you're doing well uh, compared to the past. There are challenges. Uh, is your university system what it should be? Absolutely not. There is politicization. We all know that. Um, uh, a lot of uh, subjects are taught which have no relevance either to critical thinking or um, uh, to skills that are needed uh, in the global economy. So there are huge challenges. Maybe you produce too many university graduates. Um, so lots and lots of challenges, but are more Africans literate? Hell yes. Are uh, more Africans um, uh, learning skills um, um, for the global economy than before? Yes. But you need much more capacity building, particularly technological. South Korea moved up the value chain. When you said, will you be like U.S.? Well, you shouldn't try to ape U.S., but I think, yes, Africa needs to be more prosperous. Yes, Africa needs to be more equitable not so unequal that is yes africa needs to be more uh, dynamic and yes africa needs to be able to do better business with the world already it is doing business with the world but on the world's terms In inventions innovations Invention it needs more inventions innovations but um, going back uh, uh, to 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 uh, what it really needs is capacity building that word that is often used in simple terms what it means is that more African doctors, better trained doctors, better local responses, so that if something like Ebola happens, you're not reliant on people flying in, the cavalry coming in from the US and Europe and leaving without leaving you with any knowledge and perhaps not even doing much. One of the people in the conference we attended was saying that eventually what worked in Ebola was quarantine. Uh, quarantine. Um, uh, and um, uh, the US in, uh, and Europe behaved exceedingly arrogantly. So what the Africans need to do is develop their abilities in medicine, science, technology, engineering, uh, critical thinking, um, even for that matter, legal skills. There are lots of lawyers that are produced in Kenya. In terms of very, very little good law. Yeah, constitution. In the sense that, yes, the constitution is written and all that, but if you look at drafting of the law today, it is actually the call or even the writing in, in the press that has gone down. So yes, you have more graduates, but um, what I saw um, in a student newspaper in, of the 1970s, and I saw that uh, Mr. Benguit, uh, Buguit, right? If I'm Buguit, uh, showed me, yeah. is something that's missing. So yes, on the whole things have improved, but there's a lot of work to do and uh, certain good things of the past you need to keep in and build on them. Uh, and you need a change in mindset, um, a more critical, innovative thinking about now, deep issues. I saw, I saw in Egypt, <clears throat> just uh, two, day, two, three days ago, mm -hmm. there's a gentleman, a university student who discovered, who, um, discovered a, a bulletproof, mm -hmm. a clothing like this one, much lighter than mm -hmm. the, the bulletproof we know, mm -hmm. just from Egypt. They discovered it. They have but it. That will happen in Africa in due course of time. Yeah. There are plenty of Africans who are clever. If you build your education systems, the innovations will follow. But the, the whites are going to come for, for, for that idea. They will buy it. Is uh, it? At the moment, yes. Uh, but they will? Bit in, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the advantage, the advantage lies with the US and Europe. And it will lie for the next, especially with the US. Europe is under too much debt, especially. And the corporate will go to the US or the, the Europe. <sighs> Pardon me? The m -Pesa. The M Pesa. Yeah, yeah. You know the M Pesa? Yes, of course, I know. You, have you used it? Not yet. You should yes. before you go back. Uh, yes. M Pesa is is uh, is Kenya is a brainchild. Yes, I know. And M Pesa, the idea. Euro, even the Europeans are using it. Yes, it I know. It is a global idea. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is the innovations will come as education improves in this country, and as uh, you know, Kenyans travel, and as uh, uh, you know, um, Ghanaians travel, and Egyptians travel, and ideas percolate through the internet and interaction, um, innovations will come. That's not to worry about. Now, I from that. Let, now, let's come to leadership issues. When Obama was here and yeah. he went to Ethiopia, yeah. AU, AU, AU event, yeah, African and he anyway. said, he told the African leaders that, yeah. you, look, I, I might, if, if I go for that term in the US, yeah. probably I might win it. Um, maybe maybe he, he could. Maybe he was the favorite. But he was, what he was saying, that Africans, African leaders want to die on power. Look at Zimbabwe. Yeah. Mugabe, Mugabe the first and the last president of Zimbabwe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that is true. But why are, Africans, why are African leaders dying on throne? Okay, okay, here, let's take a step back. Let us understand the way 
the states have been created in Africa. Uh, Africa pre-colonization had a lot of tribes. Some of them were fighting each other, you know, uh, but they were also trading with each other. Uh, there was a rhythm to life. Uh, there was a natural decentralization. Remember, Mandela talks about his tribal village and he said the purest form of democracy he saw was in that village, okay? Yeah. Uh, his ancestral village. And there was some kind of identification um, uh, amongst um, uh, at least village members and even tribe members. They would collectively do things. Okay, yes, there were injustices. Don't get me wrong. It yeah. wasn't uh, everyone singing Kumbaya. Uh, but what colonization did was come in and create a Westphalian state. What that means is in 1648, when the Thirty Years' War ended, Europe created nation-state structures which were very top-down. So Paris ruled over everything. London ruled over um, um, England, and then Scotland, and Ireland, and then the rest of the world. And these top-down structures were particularly imposed in countries like India, where the Viceroy ruled. And then in Africa, even more so, it was brutal and bloody. The, the colonial powers played divide and rule. Now, when the colonial powers left, the structures of the state did not change. They were still top-down. And whoever occupied the capital got the entire share of the pie. They got to give patronage. There were no checks and balances. The bottom uh, up uh, institutions, such as uh, village assemblies, such as tribal councils, such as um, uh, civil society, had been beaten and broken. And so these big men, once they occupied the throne, they said, well, this feels good. Why should I leave? And they were also afraid if they left and another chap came to power, then the other chap would just dispense patronage and get rid of all their supporters. And often the tribes, the struggle between the tribes became even more intense because it was a winner takes all system. The person who came to power and his tribe profited most or even certain select members of his tribe. And the others were totally left. So. In Africa, there are many, many, many things that have happened um, that have led to this. Well, it's colonization. It is also the short-sighted, short-sightedness, stupidity, and cupidity of African leaders, the big men who never wanted to leave the throne, no, who wanted what? more and more money, and also, um, you know, um, a, a lack of development of civil society. But that's changing. I, I, in Africa, this month that I write with Samuel Ulunga, yeah, yeah. who is uh, from Kenya. He grew up in Eldoret, he's an alumnus of Moy University, then went to Cambridge and Harvard. We talk about the gradual democratization of Africa. Look at Gabon. It's going to happen. It is happening. Congo. Look at let's Burundi. not talk about let's not talk about Congo and Burundi, but let's talk about Gabon. Gabon at least had an election. Under Bongo Senior, you didn't really have elections. People died who opposed him. Yeah. Now at least Jean Ping challenged him. In Nigeria you have a new president. So many other places, you know, you're starting to see, you know, at least elections. So um, Congo, well, Congo is in civil war. It will take a long time. Uh, Congo is dealing with a horrific past. It is Southern dealing Sudan. With, yes, Southern Sudan as well. It's going through civil war. You all, we all know it. Um, Somalia, Al-Shabaab. Yes, but let us, let us remember that these things take time to go. Europe had the Thirty Years' War. Europe had the Napoleonic Wars. Europe had the First World War. Britain alone had casualties, I believe, of 54,000 or 56,000 in a single day on 1st of July, Battle of Somme. In Africa, have you had any concentration camps yet? Not yet. So let us not be too harsh on Africa. These things will take time. These things will change as the people change, as the people become more empowered and educated. Then Africa will change. Now, is bad leadership the, the main cause of, of all these problems in Africa? No, there's no single one cause. Bad leadership is part of the problem. Yeah. The toxic legacy of colonization is also part of the problem. Um, the, 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 the sheer uh, uh, disruptive change, so much of change in so short a time that has happened to Africa, wherein so many, let's say, uh, hunter-gatherer societies suddenly had to move not only to the industrial but even the post-industrial world. That is a problem. Uh, one would argue that missionary activity, the, the 
overbearing role of religion in African society is a problem. Um, uh, because as, you, as let's be honest, the Catholic Church burnt its cleverest people, including Giordano Bruno on 31st December 1600. Yeah. Not a single Catholic country had a democracy until very recently because it had a top-down structure. So religion, religion, um, particularly fundamentalist extreme religion has been a problem. So lots of things uh, have come in and the battle of souls is part of them, you know. So what you're saying, Africa is not that bad? I'm saying it's not at all bad. It's actually rather pretty good. It has uh, historic challenges and uh, it is gradually bit by bit uh, uh, coming to terms with uh, one of them and uh, this is a period of transition. Now the US campaigns, we're going to talk about it and the Brexit <laughs> and the Brexit. Absolutely. Is Britain going to stand alone uh, after the break? Now let's take a short break. When we come back, we talk Brexit. US campaign, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. My name is Giva Sumaina. I'm with Atul Singh. Don't go away.